Hi, honey. How's the treatment going? Are you feeling okay? Uh, you know, I'm dying, so what does that make me? Special? Well, yes, it kind of does, actually. And I'm so glad you're keeping your sense of humor about it all. Well, you know me, laughing all the way to the grave. Honey, I know your way of coping with your illness is a viciously dark sense of humor. And I respect that. I really do. I've never been in your position. I can't imagine what I would do to deal with it. But... Okay, yeah. But... So you're saying it's starting to bum you out a little? No, I've emotionally prepared for the inevitable. At least the best anyone could. And plus, I know you and know where you're coming from. And I love you. Aw, I love you too, babe. And thanks for putting up with me. So, where's the butt? Do you want to continue with the butt? Oh, right. Well... I just think that you need to be careful what you say around your mom and dad. Why, whatever could you mean? Oh, I think you know exactly what I mean. Could it be the fact that they are, shall we say, not handling the fact that their daughter is going to be dead soon very well? Yeah, well, that's just about it. Look, Cora, I obviously have my own stuff going on that I have to deal with. The last thing I need to have going on is dealing with my parents' seven stages of grief. There are plenty of great grief counselors out there, and besides, they go to church. Why can't they just talk to one of their pastors about it? You're so... scornful of them going to church still? No, hun, i I'm scornful of anything anymore. I've accepted everything and everyone at this point. But still, I never could reconcile them going to that church and also having a gay daughter. And one who they very much accepted. Well, for the most part, I mean, it did take some time, especially on mom's part. It took a long time for her to accept that my brother's kids were going to be the only grandkids she'd get. And they're a bunch of dunces. You were always the smart one. First in your class. The valedictorian. Big time journalist lady. Well, what can I say? I was magnificent. Hey, still are. Yeah, well, speaking of that. How close are we to having enough to rent out New Line Bar? Well, um... Come on, Cora, give it to me straight. About... 1200 Phew, okay. I can't believe that Lucy won't let us have the party there for free. After all the money we've sent in there over the years, I mean, come on, right? The least she could do is let us have my memorial service there. I know, but you know how she is about her money. I'm getting cremated. It's not like they're going to just heave my corpse up onto the bar and call it a day. Well, I doubt your parents would be okay with either of those things. Well, I don't really care what they want. We've been over there, and over it, and over it. I know, I'm just saying, don't shoot the messenger. But your mom's been up my butt all week about wanting to get together. Get together? Well, what about? My dad, too? Why does she want to get together? Well, um, I don't know exactly, but I can only imagine it has something to do with planning the funeral. And what would give you that suspicion? Well, I guess when she told me she wanted to get together and talk about your funeral arrangements. And was there any reason why my mother didn't want her daughter involved with her own funeral plans? Well, I'll give you one wild guess, and it's not because she wants to help pick out the party favors. Ah, I see. So she thinks that she has the right to plan some big religious funeral for me, right? Well, basically, yes. How did you know? Oh, I don't know. Because I know my mother very well. Well, why would she want to talk to me about it without you? I mean, what did she think I would have to say about it? Well, I guess it's all going to depend on what she has to say about it. What do you mean? I mean, how hard is the call going to be? How heavy is she going to lean on you to lean on me? Do you dig me? Oh, I see. So you really think that she really thinks that she can manipulate me into... Uh, manipulating you? Um, I'm sorry, babe. I'm going to have to think about that one for a minute. Uh, yeah, no worries. Me too. Well, anyway, I guess we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah, I guess we'll see, all right. Just try not to yell at her, okay? I think this is all just because she's trying to get back some semblance of control of the situation. Do you know what I mean? I do. I do. And I can relate. Hi, Mom. How's it going? Oh, well, hello, dear. How are you? I mean, that's what's more important, right? How you are feeling. Oh, well, thanks. I'm actually feeling pretty good, I think. Oh, you, uh, you think? Well, I mean, yeah, some days are better than others. Oh, oh, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's unfortunately just the name of the game, you know, Mom? The game? What's that? What game is this that you speak of? Is this some game to you, being sick? Um, 
No, Mom, that's not at all what I meant. I just meant, this is what it's like sometimes to be sick, you know? No, I guess I don't. Thank God that your father and I and your brother have always been blessed with good health. But you, you always were a sickly one. A sickly child. I know, it was tough on everyone. No, that's not what I meant at all by that! I know, I'm sorry. I just wish that you hadn't reminded me of that fact so many times. All right, well, I'm sorry. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it now, so please don't make me feel guilty. I'm going through enough, and so is your father. Yeah, well, something tells me that I may be going through just a little bit more than you. I understand, dear, I really do, and I'm sorry if I'm coming across as insensitive. No, no, you're fine, Mom, I understand too. This is a lot for a parent to go through. That's something I can't understand either. Well, thank you for trying, at least. Now, there is something that I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, really? Jeez, what could that be? Well, it was something that I wanted to talk to your... Uh, wife about, but she kept canceling on me for some reason. Yeah, well, you know, she has been incredibly busy with all of this. You know, with me and making arrangements and such and so forth. Oh, do you mean that you two already made all of the arrangements? Well, no, we haven't, but we are getting some money together to rent out a, um, venue. Oh, really? Well, perhaps that's something your father and I could contribute to. Oh, really? Oh, that would actually be really fantastic, because we've actually been having some trouble with it all. Oh, no. Well, would you like me to talk to them? What church is it? I could go down there tomorrow. Well, the thing is, Mom, it's not going to be at a church. Well, what are you talking about? Of course it's going to be in the church. Well, Mom... Actually, we've decided to go a different route. Oh, and what route would that be? A regular old funeral home? Do you know what those places are like? They're butcher shops. Do you remember what they did to Grandma? Yes, Mom, I know, I know. Well, we are Catholic, so I don't see why you would have had a funeral home anywhere else, for that matter. Mom, you guys are Catholic. I go to church twice a year with the both of you just to make you happy. Oh, Ruby, don't say that. You're breaking my heart. Well, I'm sorry that I never wanted to support an organization that hated my very existence. Well, if you aren't going to have it in the church, then where are you going to have it? I suppose we could tolerate a funeral home if it was a nice one. In fact, uh, there's that new one over in Centerville, uh, Sacred Comforts. Martha went to her cousin's funeral there and said it was very nice, very clean. Well, I'm very glad for Martha and her cousin and Sacred Comforts, but we already have a place picked out. A place that's very special to us. A place that's very near and dear to our hearts. Oh, okay. And where might that be? Well, um, the New Line Bar, actually. The what? Yeah, it's the bar that Cora and I met at. You don't remember, do you? Uh, no. A bar? Oh, no, no, no. You cannot have your memorial service in a bar. Well, why not? The place is special to us, and we don't see why we should feel obligated to do the same old thing. Well, on top of the fact that God would never forgive you and you would be going to hell, where would we put the casket? Oh, well, Mom, there's not going to be any casket. No casket? And why isn't there going to be a casket? Well, um, because we have no need for one. Well, what? Are they going to put you in a beer crate or something? Well, Mom, we won't be needing a casket because I'm not being displayed or buried. I'm being cremated. Cremated? Uh, what do you mean by uh, cremated? Well, I mean that after I die, instead of being buried, I'm going to be burnt. What? You can't do that! It's a sin! It is? Wow, I don't think I even knew that. Well, it is, and your father and I will not stand for it, do you understand? Um, what do you mean, you won't stand for it? I mean, there is no way, and I mean no way, that we will be contributing a dime to this so-called service. If it is going to be held in a bar or any other similar type of establishment... That is, unless it's an Irish bar, of course. Well, it's definitely not that. In fact, it's a gay bar. Excuse me? A gay bar? You are going to have your own funeral in a gay bar? Willingly? Like, it's your idea? Well, yes, Mother. As a matter of fact, I am. And I am because I can. Because it's my funeral, and it's my life, and it's my death. Well, I brought you into this world, so don't I have a say as to how you go out of it? Not anymore. Not for about 30 years. I'm a grown woman that I have been for a very long time. And part of being a grown woman is choosing to either have your own faith or not. Well, I think you are making a huge mistake, young lady. A huge mistake! And how am I making a huge mistake? It's my funeral. 
Well, didn't you once tell me that a funeral isn't for the one who died, but it's for the ones who were left behind to grieve and reminisce? Yeah, and I also said that it's the dead person's right for those people to have a final memory of them in a way that they wanted. The way that is representative of the person, of who they were and how they lived their lives. Well, I say it's against God's wishes and against his plan. Well, he doesn't have a say in it and frankly, neither do you. Well, if your memorial service, if my own daughter's memorial service is going to be held in a gay bar, then I for one am not going to be in attendance. Wait. Are you being serious right now, Mom? That's right, I absolutely am. If your memorial service is going to be at such a din of sin, then your parents will not be in attendance. What? Are you serious? Like, you can't really just not go to your daughter's funeral because it's at a gay bar. It's your own daughter's funeral, for God's sake. How dare you blaspheme me in front of your mother, young lady? I don't ever want to hear that out of your mouth again. Well, that won't be a problem, Mom, because pretty soon you'll never have to hear anything out of my mouth ever again. How could you say that? That is horrible! I can't believe you just said that to me! Well, I'm sorry, Mom, but facts are facts, and the truth hurts, and my wife and I stopped kidding ourselves a long time ago. Maybe it's time that you faced them. Face the fact that this is all up to me, not up to you. You can't control everything. Well, I can still pray that I can still help you. I don't have to give up hope just because you have. I haven't lost my religion, I still believe in something, unlike everyone else in this sick culture of ours. No, Mom, you don't. But I just need you to know that I've accepted things. I need to know that my parents aren't miserable. Well, I for one can't, and if you want to have your funeral at that place, you're going to have to pay for it yourself. And if you're running out of time so quickly as you have so resigned yourself to, I suggest you figure out something quickly. Oh, come on, Mom, don't be like that, not now, okay? Mom? Hello? Mom? Hey, honey. How are you doing? Hey, Dad. Uh, not so great. Oh, yeah. Is it all that stuff about your mom, or is it how you're feeling? Well, to be honest, it's both. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, hun. Well, your mother... I don't know. I just don't know what to say about that. I wish I did, but sometimes there are just no words, you know? I know, Dad. Believe me, I get it. I just want her to accept that everything is going to be okay. I know, honey, but that's easy for you to say. You're not going to be around to have to deal with you being gone. <laughs> now that's an interesting conundrum now, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. Well, Dad, I'm sure that she told you everything about the funeral and church and the bar. N yes, dear. Of course she did. And, well, she said a few times that you were upset too, that you wouldn't be coming either. I was afraid maybe that was something she'd said. Damn that Piper. I love the woman, but she just can't accept death. But you're her little girl. Heck, you're my little girl too. Aw, Dad. I've always accepted you, no matter what, sweetie. I respect your beliefs, and I always expected you to respect ours, plain and simple. Dad, thank you so much. That means so much to me. People are who they are. All these people who judge others, well, they'd think twice about it if it was their own family. That is, if they had any decency or good sense about them. Well, amen to that. I just wish that Mom felt the same way as you. Oh, she does, honey. She does. Oh, uh, really? Because she acted like having my funeral at a gay bar was tantamount to killing Christ. It isn't that. She's just in denial, honey. Just give her time. Dad, I don't know how much I have left to give. I know, sweetie. I'll try to talk to her. Your mom loves you so much, and I do too. I'm so proud of you. You've accomplished so much. Well, I had a great dad to back me up the whole time. But my daughter, an accomplished journalist. I never would have thought that would have happened. I'll talk to her, see what I can do. Okay, Dad. Thanks. Love you, sweetie. I love you, too. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, sweetie. I'm so glad you texted me. How are you? Well, pretty good. I mean, okay. Honey... I've been talking to your father, and I just want to tell you how sorry I am for trying to go against your wishes. It really was wrong of me. It's okay, Mom, really. Well, thank you, but I just need you to know that it had nothing to do with your lifestyle. I've always accepted you for who you are, and yes, at first it was difficult for me when you came out of the proverbial closet. It was much more difficult for me than it was your father, but... Oh, honey, I was so cruel, and I am just so sorry. Oh, Mom, it's all right, I understand. 
You're just going through all of this in your own way, just like the rest of us, but I've come to accept it. But honey, that's the thing. You won't be around to miss you. Yeah, Dad said something similar. I'll still be here, day in and day out, thinking about you, missing you, holding on to those little wonderful things about you. And that's what my memorial will be about, all the little wonderful things. Because that's what I tried to make my life about, noticing and celebrating Mom. And believe it or not, I learned that from you. Oh honey, this is all going to be so hard for me. You'll be okay. You'll get through it, I promise. When things get really hard, just think about this conversation. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Ruby died at home, painless and sleeping, on a Tuesday morning with Cora and her family by her side. She listened to her mother's favorite show tunes, at peace with all of her resolutions. The party was held at New Line Bar a few weeks later, with all of their friends and family in attendance. And it was so well attended that the fire marshal was almost called. After some heavy-handed cajoling, Piper talked Lucy into waiving the rental fee. 